Welcome to the second in a series of lectures on the physiology of the endocrine system. In this brief lecture we will talk about hormone control, negative feedback, and briefly discuss how hormones interact with the target cell. The very word hormone means to urge on. The hormone sends a signal to the cell to change its behavior. The hormone might, for example, signal the cell to make glucose. Here we see the hormone glucagon binding to its receptor on the liver cell and stimulating the liver cell to release glucose. Once the glucose levels rise to normal, further secretion of glucose is suppressed. We call that process negative feedback. Let's see how that works. If your room is cold, the thermostat senses that heat is needed. It sends a signal to the heat pump controller, which turns on the heat pump, which produces heat. When the room is hot enough, the thermostat senses it, and the thermostat switches off the heat pump. So in simple terms, you ask for something, you get it, and you stop asking. This seems very simple, and indeed it is. Think about asking your teenager to clean her room. You ask her to clean her room, she cleans her room, and since you got the result you wanted, you stop asking. Keep this simple example in mind when you think about negative feedback. It will turn out to be a lot more useful than you realize. Here's an example using a graph of blood sugar values. When the blood glucose level is too high, insulin is secreted. We'll look at the details of this later, but for now just know that insulin will lower the blood glucose levels. When the blood glucose levels are low, insulin secretion is stopped as you see at the red arrow. Again, very simple. You need the blood glucose levels to go down. Insulin is secreted. It drops the blood glucose levels. Now that you've gotten what you asked for, you stop asking. Insulin secretion is stopped. Now, the amount of hormone that you require to have an effect in the body is very, very low. And that's because the hormone itself really isn't responsible for anything. It's a signal that tells the cell to switch on or switch off some activity, some machinery in the cell. Let's look at a possible example of machines in the cell. What if you had a machine that broke maltose down into two glucose molecules? Of course, when we talk about machines, we're really talking about enzymes. One way a hormone will change the way a cell functions is to turn on an enzyme. Here's an example of an enzyme. This enzyme, glucosidase, converts maltose linked glucose molecules into individual glucose sugars. It will continue to do so as long as it's active. So switching on such an enzyme inside a cell would stimulate the cell to produce large quantities of glucose from maltose. Protein hormones bind to receptors on the cell surface. And since they don't enter the cell, there has to be some way to get the message inside the cell so that the activity of the cell can be changed. So for example, if you wanted to switch on an enzyme inside the cell, the hormone would bind to the receptor on the cell surface, and then another molecule inside the cell would actually turn on the enzyme. The hormone binds to a receptor and stimulates the formation of another molecule inside the cell. This molecule will then switch on the enzyme. As long as the hormone is bound to the receptor, more and more of the second messenger, the one that switches on the enzyme, will be made, and more and more enzymes will be stimulated. And since each enzyme molecule makes huge numbers of product, you can see that once a hormone binds to a receptor, you get a lot of activity. It's not quite that simple. Here we see the formation of the second messenger cyclic AMP switching on an enzyme we've left a lot of the intermediate steps out here. If you're interested in more detail, 
look at the notes and there's a link to another video. But it's really not important to understand exactly how it works. It's important to understand that a small amount of hormone can have an enormous effect on the productivity of the cell. Because the hormones turn on machinery in the cell. They turn on enzymes in the cell. And we can say then that the hormone signal is amplified. Now some hormones actually go right through the cell membrane. They don't act on surface receptors. They work inside the cell. And these hormones find their activity by switching on DNA. Steroid hormones, thyroid hormone, and vitamin D are all able to enter the cell. Think about ribosomes. What do they do? Well, let's follow along. The hormone enters the cell, binds to a receptor, and then enters the nucleus of the cell. For example, the steroid hormone aldosterone lowers the potassium ion levels in the body. It does this by switching on the DNA that codes for a protein pump that actually pumps potassium out of the body into the urine. So once the aldosterone hormone binds to its receptor and enters the nucleus, it switches on the part of the DNA that codes for the protein pump. And as long as aldosterone is bound to its receptor, it will continue to induce copies of messenger RNA that will make molecule after molecule of this protein pump. So once again, amplification. So we see amplification either by the second messenger system, which operates on the cell surface, or by uh, activating strands of DNA, such as uh, the strands that code for the protein pump, in the case of aldosterone a steroid hormone. Thyroid hormone and vitamin D also work in the same way and both of them amplify the hormone signal. Well, uh, that's about it for part two of our uh, lecture series. Thank you for your attention and uh, please see the show notes for photo credits and further information.